Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Amazon drone delivery service is in the news again, Skydive Myrtle Beach may be getting a raw deal, a World War II Lancaster bomber needs help. I'm Brie Cross, it's December 1st, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Amazon continues to test its concept of package delivery via drone. Their original design wasn't much more than modified existing technology, but the new design has a similar plan form as Santos Dumont's first heavier-than-air aircraft back in 1906. That is, it is squared off, looks something like a box kite, and is hard to tell the front from the back. According to details released by Amazon, they say the drone weighs 55 pounds and will have a payload capability of about 5 pounds. The big difference is that it uses a combination of vertical lift motors and a tail-mounted pusher motor, which allows it to accelerate into higher speed in level flight. This combination extends the endurance and range of the UAV. They also claim the vehicle has the capability of searching for its landing target, and it also has sense and avoid technology to dodge obstacles. Amazon says this UAV will not be put into service until they receive, quote, the regulatory support needed to safely realize our vision, end quote. Amazon also released a video with their press release that shows the new UAV in action as it is loaded with a package and then delivers it to the customer. For over 30 years, the staff of Aero News have attempted to practice aggressive investigative journalism when aviation issues appear to require such attention. Actions being brought against a skydive operation named Skydive Myrtle Beach in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, have come to our attention. Over the course of a number of weeks, the ANN editorial staff have been perusing hundreds of pages of documents surrounding the forced closure of the South Carolina aviation business based at the Grand Strand Airport by county officials. The matter is convoluted, contains a number of questionable statements that include charges of safety issues by county officials that appear to be highly suspect and possess less than expert knowledge of skydiving operations. ANN CEO, Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell is a veteran skydiver and earned both United States Parachute Association Jumpmaster and Instructor ratings. Jim's investigation has shown that he cannot confirm the issues that relate to safety violations and county officials have responded with contradiction and some pretty arcane requests for information restrictions, if not outright refusals, to provide information regarding the issues. As a result, ANN is filing request with South Carolina Attorney General, the Inspector General of the United States Department of Transportation, and United States Attorney General and others requesting their immediate attention and investigation of the Horry County and Grand Strand Airport Administration's findings against Skydive Myrtle Beach. ANN will keep you informed of this matter as it progresses. After the break, donations are needed to preserve a flying Lancaster bomber. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. There are just a few days left to go in the Kickstarter campaign to fund the transportation of British Lancaster bomber from Edmonton, New Brunswick, Canada to Edmonton, Alberta, Canada and the Alberta Aviation Museum. Of the 7,377 Lancasters built during World War II, only 17 complete examples survive. 
The Alberta Aviation Museum intends to restore this Lancaster to flying condition in its RCAF 408 Squadron Cold War era configuration circa 1964, which would make the aircraft one of a kind. The goal is to have the airplane relocated to Edmonton in time for the 408 Squadron's 75th anniversary at the end of June 2016. The Kickstarter campaign will run until December 9th with a goal of raising $88,244. Donors to the campaign will receive commemorative merchandise, including artwork, t-shirts, pens, and coffee mugs, on top of their tax receipt. Troy Kirkby, an Alberta Aviation Museum volunteer who is coordinating the online fund drive, said, quote, Warbird enthusiasts around the world have been watching and waiting to see what happens with this iconic aircraft, end quote. Every Tuesday, we look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. However, when Old Man Winter hits and the air shows and fly-ins take some time off, there are still hundreds of aero locations, or perhaps you're thinking of creating your own aero event with a remote control aircraft or drone as a Christmas gift. Here is this week's aero calendar. The ADSB 2020 mandate is just around the corner, and Duncan Aviation has scheduled its final free ADSB seminar for 2015. The seminar will be held on December 9th. Regional Avionics Sales Manager Mark Frantic will host the final seminar of the year at the 94th Annual Squadron Restaurant in Van Nuys, California. If you decide to take a break from the cold weather by visiting Florida, don't miss the Wings Over Miami Air Museum, located at Miami Executive Airport. This great museum serves as a tribute to those veterans and aviators who pioneered civil and military aviation. The museum both displays and flies military and classic aircraft to share the rich history of flight. If you think EAA only puts on a show at the end of July each year, that's just not the case. EAA holds their annual Wright Brothers Memorial Banquet on Friday, December 11th at the EAA Air Venture Museum in Oshkosh. This year's banquet will commemorate the 112th anniversary of the Wright Brothers' first successful powered flight at Kitty Hawk, and the featured guest speaker is Eric Lindbergh. And finally, if you're planning to make this Christmas a time to join in on the fun of remote-controlled model aircraft or drones, make certain your own homemade aero event complies with important safety recommendations. Be sure to visit the knowbeforeyoufly.org website to ensure your pre-flight planning is complete. After these messages, Cessna Citation Longitude goes with a fly-by-wire rudder. Concorde's recombinant gas RG Series sealed battery technology produces a high-performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. A rudder flight control electronic system developed by Thales will fly on the Cessna Citation Longitude. A pair of Thales smart electronic control units use electrical signals to augment pilots' input from rudder pedals to enhance the stability of the aircraft. Flight Safety International announces the introduction of its new Master Aviator Certification Program. The certification is earned by completing a series of advanced aircraft-specific courses and a choice of electives. The program sets a new standard for pilot achievement and recognition. Spirit Aerosystems has begun production of the Royal Australian Air Force's first production P-8A aircraft. Spirit started production on the 737 military derivative in October, and the first unit is scheduled to deliver to Boeing in early 2016. 
Two men who had immigrated to the U.S. from Palestine 15 years ago and are American citizens were barred from boarding a Southwest airline flight in Chicago. Another passenger said he was afraid to fly on the same plane as the pair. The issue was resolved. A Trent 7000 demonstrator engine has run for the first time, marking another program milestone for the Rolls-Royce Trent family. The Trent 7000 is the exclusive power plant for the Airbus A330neo and is scheduled to enter service in 2017. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Winter will pass, spring will come, and July marks EAA AirVenture 2016. If it seems a little early to be talking about AirVenture, keep in mind that it takes mega pre-flight planning for AirVenture to lift off. If you're planning on staying in Camp Scholler, EAA just released some information you need to be aware of. The system for campsites with electricity and water connections will now be available online when campsite purchases begin in late June 2016. It will be possible to check the Camp Scholler website to see how many improved campsites are still available, where they are located, and the cost of securing them from that date through the final day of AirVenture. This feature will be added to the EAA website on June 24, 2016, the same day Camp Scholler opens for those wishing to acquire a campsite for AirVenture 2016 on July 25th through the 31st. This online system is only for improved campsites. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.